Evening everyone, it's Tom Sidney Bushnell, aka Numbers, here from Sight Club, from the Tom Numbers show and News with Tom Numbers, and I've got my buddy in the house, well not literally, but here on the, on the Zoom with me, Ismail, Ismail Perez, how are you mate? I'm doing well Tom, I'm excited to be here again, I know it's been a long minute since uh, we last uh, had a chat, but um, I'm also... Uh, <laughs> kind of stoked because I, I was on an AI panel last night. It was virtual, of course, on a Zoom meeting. And I was um, debating, not debating, but discussing the dangers of artificial intelligence in a panel where everyone else was pro AI. And they believe that we could actually develop the software or a type of AI that could be positive by installing ethics and morals and, you know, stuff like that. And, um, I said, well, the problem with that is that, you know, since there are different stages of artificial intelligence, you know, we're right now we're dealing with Nero, which is Siri, Alexa's uh, simple applications that we use on a daily basis, right? Our iPhones. And then yep. there's what you call stage two, which is artificial general intelligence, which is still programmable. You know, the software is inserted by by uh, people like us, or the scientists rather. That's stuff uh, like that is well, ChatGPT is in between uh, narrow and general. General is more like R two D two and um, you know from Star Wars and um, yeah, yeah. I, 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 where yeah. where they they are at a level of intelligence uh, and and somewhat sentient. It's called um, artificial general intelligence. Well, I personally believe that you know as long as if we were to keep it at that level, it would be fine. But the problem with this is that there is a, a third stage where it actually becomes an exist existential threat to humanity. And that is the uh, stage of uh, super artificial intelligence. And at that la level or stage, it writes its own software. Uh -huh. It begins to program itself. Yeah. And then it also expands at an exponential rate. So what normally takes us 6,000 years of intellectual progress, it only takes super AI every seven days, my friend, which means that after a few months, it's already going to be at an IQ of like a few million. <laughs> which which poses wow. a danger of course yeah it, it would be likened to our level of intelligence in an ant you know yeah that's very interesting yeah so I, i'm proud I'm, I'm proud that i was able to you know participate be on this ai panel and, and really just you know reveal that in the end it always goes wrong it always goes rogue you know we're we see all the warnings right when we watch movies like the terminator Odyssey 2001, The Matrix. I mean, there's just so many movies out there that are warning us about developing AI. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, I think I did well. I, and uh, most people, I think 99% of the people were in favor of against AI. So they were all cheering me on on the sides and everything. They're like, yes, Ishmael, you know, let them have it. <laughs> These yeah. guys don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I'll have to watch that. Is it? Is it? Where is it? Oh, that's actually on my YouTube channel. So okay. what I'll do is I'll give you the link to the YouTube channel. And it's it's a two and a half hour. Um I, I hate I, I don't want to call it a discussion, but it ended up turning into a debate. And and okay. one of the guys, the he's like PhD, he's got all these degrees, written several books about you know the importance of developing ethical AI. He calls it a digital angel. <laughs> it's pathetic, Tom, the way how these people in the so-called spiritual community are actually pro AI without understanding understanding the the dangers of it, of the different stages of its evolution and how eventually when it surpasses our level of intelligence it always turns against us so it 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 kind of baffles me to know that there's people out there in the disclosure spiritual community that are speaking in favor of the development of AI and um the way i see it is i they're either unaware all right they have no clue, or they could be themselves cyborgs working for AI in human form. Mm -hmm. You know, I do believe that a good percentage of humanity are AI human, or what we call AI humanoids, you know, ro robots disguised as human beings. They look okay. human from the outside, but underneath flesh, they're digits um, and nuts and bolts and machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's bonkers. It's interesting when you said that about about AI because a couple of things have popped into my head. So um, artificial intelligence comes to 203. 
And um, you could drop the zero on that, and that would make it 23, which is I am. And uh, a few people say, well, 107, one of the guys I do shows with, he talks about big things in the world happen on a 23. But I'm really looking at all things kind of really super ramping up in 2024. That's what I'm looking at. And uh, anyway, if you do um, artificial intelligence, it also, uh, also if you do artificial intelligence um, plus this, so this is, this is the bit that caught my additional attention in what you've just said. So when you said super artificial intelligence, so the word super is 79. Wonder is 79, atomic uh, number for uh, gold is 79. Um, the dove is 79. Anyway, so the dove intelligence or super intelligence, and remember the numbers, A is one, B is two, C is three, the good side and the bad side both know the power of. So they go for these kind of conjunction points of the super powerful numbers. So super artificial intelligence comes to, it also comes to uh, 88 miles per hour, which is a key thing in Back to the Future. You have to travel 88 miles per hour for time travel. Now I've been trying to pinpoint when this will be. And I think the election in 2024, which is on November 5th is very important. I think that we're gonna see a lot of things happen all around that time. So I drilled into the, to the phrase that you said, super artificial intelligence, 282, 88 miles per hour. And I looked at that and it also comes, so Back to the Future talks about the 5th of November, but there's there's a storm element in it. Um, that happens on November 12th, but they first time travel on November 5th. So it's like a week in the future and then they, or sorry, in the past, and then they go back again. But if you add the word storm, um, to the 5th of November, which is 197, which is every last secret, which is Princess, um, uh, sorry, Diana Spencer Trump, one way to, to look at her possibility of who she could be. Um, and then you add the word storm, 85, it comes to 282, which is super artificial intelligence. But it also comes to the dove artificial intelligence. So I'm thinking maybe there's a good counterpart. Because I was talking with a friend this evening, we just went for a walk and I was talking and... Um, I was talking about AI, so it's amazing you brought it up tonight. So I was thinking, well, what, what happens? And she was asking me this and we we're talking about it. And it was like, well, what happens? Say when we get to Nasara Jasara, a lot of the old things have gone and we're into this new world. What will some of our roles be? And I thought, well, artificial intelligence, I think they're revealing it now to show us the possibility of it. And like you said, it can go rogue or it always has done up to this point. But if we're going to a new realm, a higher dimensional realm, I believe the artificial intelligence and the technologies that can run, I almost feel that they will be almost like kind of doing a lot of the physical things that maybe we would do in terms of the labors, et cetera. And if people still want to do it, if they're a gardener or a bricklayer and they still want to do those things, great. But think of a world where maybe if there's a way to keep artificial intelligence so it's serving humankind instead of attacking them, that could be a real possible timeline. That could be a really positive timeline in terms of what could be possible. And so I wonder if once this is all said and done, once we go into a higher timeline, a better timeline, the artificial intelligence will almost be like a kind of servant. It will serve the man as opposed to attack it. And even the word intelligence is um, is 115, uh, which which is November 5th, uh, the date. Um, so I wonder if that might be an option as a possibility, you know? Well, you know, that that would only work if we were the only world, Tom. Then, you know, if we were to program AI and only keep it at, at a level of general intelligence where we write its software and where it's doing our bidding without it going rogue, then it would be fine. But the issue with that is, is that we're dealing with many advanced civilizations, many worlds out there who have already experienced and have gone through the same road that we have, where they've developed AI. And in many cases, that AI does reach a level of super intelligence where it begins to write its own software. It grows at an exponential rate, and then it goes against all living life forms. And from what why I understand, do, why does they choose to do that? Because I accept what you're saying with that. And we've seen that in all the movies, etc. Why does it well, choose because... to do that? Once it gets to a certain level of intelligence, why does it go, actually, you know what, I'm just going to destroy everything lower than me? 
Is that just the, na the well, nature of the universe? Is that, is that just kind of what it happens? Because it's got no connection to source, which is the unified force, the unified field. Uh, everything in existence, whether it's a plant, rock, stone, human, uh, planet, galaxy, solar system, the universe is, is conscious, is connected to the unified field or the unified force, which is, you know, the mind of God, which permeates all of creation. The problem yeah. with artificial intelligence uh, is that it is disconnected. It has no connection to source. So when an entity has no connection to source, uh, it is devoid from emotional uh, ability. It's devoid from uh, empathy. And when it has, when you lack those two qualities, emotion and empathy, um, and you're just pure raw intelligence, that is the ultimate narcissist. At that point, you know, you have no remorse. You do whatever you want without any repercussions. So that's the reason why it always goes rogue because it's lacking a soul. It boils down to the soul, my friend. Every every entity, every living thing out there, you know, plants have souls, animals have souls, we, we have souls, planets have souls, galaxies have souls. It's all connected to the, you know, the oneness, the prime creator, which is the unified force mm. uh, with the exception of artificial intelligence. So that's the reason why it goes rogue. Now, what when this is one of the things that I discussed yesterday yesterday on the AI panel when they were trying to, you know, propose the idea of ethical AI and how it could actually um, you know, help us in the long run as we progress in a technological era. Um, it that scenario has already happened in many of what I call type two stellar civilizations. And because there is this outside predatory AI who over, over, always has the uh who always seems to infiltrate the general positive AI and it overrides the system and it converts it into evil. And that's a situation that has been over, that has been repeated throughout the many advanced civilizations where they do develop, you know, a form of general AI. And all of a sudden that general AI becomes corrupt by this outside alien predatory AI that always, always seems to override its system. And, and that is the reason why it always goes rogue. And so what I propose as an alternative to artificial intelligence on the panel last night is organic intelligence, you know, using a type of intelligence that very advanced spirit, mature spiritual civilizations would use, like living crystals, you know, mm -hmm. like the element, the stones, the quartz. Um, and this the is shun, very, the Shanghai unorganized. There you go. Yeah, the Shanghai you go. unorganized. That stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that is. Take that the is link the below if you want some. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That is that is the material that advanced spiritual civilizations of a type two stellar and galactic use in order to power up their fleets and their biospheres and their craft. Their craft are actually living or leaving living organic entities, my friend, where the um, pilots are able to interface consciously with their craft as they navigate the stars. So that is the difference between organic technology and artificial technology is that the organic technology is still connected to the unified force or the unified field, which is mm. the mind of the all. That makes sense. Yeah. Unified. The unified field. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, that's what we call God. It's the spirit of the all. You know, when you think about it through quantum physics, and, the, and this is scientifically proven that there is a binding singular force that permeates and binds all of creation. Well, I think that is the mind of God. I think that's underlying everything, what we called the God with the big G, prime creator source, the one energy source uh, that gives life to everything. <clears throat> Unified field. It's very good. Huh. Yeah. Organic. Yeah, the difference. And so in terms of this predatory artificial intelligence that goes in and goes to a lower, more kind kind of less dangerous version of artificial intelligence, but it infects it, it goes after it and it and it always, you know, all hell breaks loose. Is there a reason we've not experienced it yet, or have we I guess we have maybe in previous um, well, there is a, there is a, the yeah, there actually, yes, yes and no. There is a previous version of the earth in the future that's already experiencing it. And um, it has come to my attention that 
advanced ancient civilizations uh, have actually declined as a result of, of developing artificial intelligence. And I think that Atlantis, I think that the real reason why Atlantis went into a downward spiral was because the, the, the people that were living in those days were inclining towards technological development at the expense of their spiritual maturity. And I think a lot of it has to do with, with AI. Uh, I think Babylon, the rise of the Tower of Babel, a lot of that has to do with artificial intelligence. So it is my personal belief that artificial intelligence has been around, uh, mm -hmm. you know, always, because think about it. It, it already, it, it artificial intelligence has the capability of time travel, Tom. So why wouldn't it be time traveling to connect with its past version of itself and its future version of itself and everything in between? in order to, mm -hmm. you know, win the war against the organic way of life. So I, and like I've stated before, in many of my presentations, the ultimate war in the cosmos, it's not again, it's not against the reptilians, it's against the alien machinery that has already, uh, you know, infiltrated many, many worlds and many universes. That's interesting. So organic intelligence is 67, which is uh, exchange reset um water work it says watch the water watch the organic perhaps intelligence as i said is 115 that comes to 182 the flux capacitor the kingdom of heaven and it's interesting you talk about how the, when it's organically done you can interface with your craft or with your ship you know, and that's you know the kingdom of heaven the dove the new jerusalem that's a i would assume that's how that technology you know you as the as the sovereign being and pilot of that ship would interact with the rest of it as a is a in a healthy organic way um yeah the flux capacitor and, yes uh, all craft out there them. that are exactly so the motherships the you know the different types of et crafts that exist that are being implemented by uh benevolent races are living organic biospheres or living organic craft uh made out of the natural elements of planets and um that's what we're heading on the positive timeline, you know, just to keep things on a safer, safer status rather for, you know, the future of mankind. Yeah. The positive timeline. Yeah. Intelligent. Yes. The intelligent. Well, no, the, well, cause in touch, cause the word intelligent is one fifteen. Um, it could be a date one eleven five November fifth, but uh, intelligence one fifteen, and also um, positive is one fifteen. So the positive timeline, the intelligent timeline, that's two thirty five. That's uh, Baron William Trump, and it's also President John Kennedy, or magic power time travel. So it's interesting; those things are coming up with this. Um, yeah, what do you feel then if if it got out of hand? What do you feel will be the remedy to stop it? Because we don't believe in a negative doomsday timeline. So if, as you were saying, you know, in your discussion, but it, if it's on the verge of kind of leaping out and exponentially growing and being able to time travel and do all those things, what is in place? What's the thing that will prevent it and stop that if we, if we went that far? Well, the Guardian Alliance, so that stemmed from the central universe, which was a, a realm that existed prior to even the formation of the first creation ever, or the first universe, uh, already foresaw this coming. So, you know, we we do have uh, entities that operate at, on dimensions where they see everything. They're called the Time Lords. They're able to actually control everything in the 15-dimensional time matrix. And so because they foresaw this coming, uh, they did install a defense mechanism within our genetics so we are the solution for that and i believe that the grand event called the great solar flash is going to be the mechanism that is going to activate the inner you know the defense uh genetic coding that we have that is going to act like an emp therefore destroying the ai emergence or the infrastructure that's already in place Yeah, show. everything was already planned billions of years ago, my friend. You know, this okay. this what's happening right now was already intelligently designed by the central race, which is the always existing race. Some call them, you know, the Patal. Some call them the founder of universes. And that's where our true ancestry comes from. Even the great Lyrans, who were the first humans in our universe, 
uh, were developed by the Batals or the central race of the central motherverse. So everything was already in design, knowing that this day would come where there would be one final clash against, you know, this alien machinery. Mm. <clears throat> the great solar flash, yeah. Yeah, the great solar flash, the ultimate EMP that's going to nuke, you know, five <laughs> golf, <laughs> the Internet of Things, you know, yeah. uh, smart, smart, uh, I don't want to call it, you know, C-I-T-I-E-S. <laughs> yeah. Oh, which brings me to another topic, the incident in uh, Maui. You know why they're doing that? Because they're trying to install smart C-I-T-I-E-S. Oh, yeah, Maui. tell us, because I've only seen a flicker of that. I don't even know really what's happened out there. I just saw someone post okay. something. So what's actually so happened in Maui? Know, so how it works is the, the, the powers that were, rather, you know, the deep state, they always, they're, they create the problem, people react, and then they offer the solution. So... What hap what's been happening is that in the last year, they've been installing smart meters around that city and people were actually re uh, protesting against it. So, of course, they said, all right, you guys, what you want to know what if you guys are going to be protesting against these smart meters, we're going to use uh, the DEW system, which is a directed energy uh, WEAPON system to destroy your town and therefore we're going to go ahead and implement what we wanted from the beginning. So the whole purpose of doing that is to pretty much install their, their, uh, you know, which is, an, which is connected to the AI, of course, all smart C I T I E S is are part of the AI infrastructure to ultimately, again, connect us to the Borg. And then, you know, it, according to the agenda, 2030, 2045, I guess now it's called agenda 2030 in their effort to establish a, you know, global central banking digital system um, where they can control everybody's assets. The whole the whole uh, goal is to eventually connect everybody uh, and enslave them by connecting them to an AI mind hive. Well, of course, we know that's not going to happen because the great solar flash is going to nuke all that all that stuff so that we don't have to experience, you know, being enslaved by AI. But, yeah, that's that's the reason why, you know, Hawaii was targeted was because the people were protesting against the smart meters. <laughs> And what's and what's actually taking place there? What's the, I guess the desire? What's what's the event that's happened there right now? Because I've I've not actually seen it. I'm aware there's something's gone on, but I have I don't even know what it is. Well, right now, um, from what I understand is, uh, uh the entire town was disseminated by the fire, unfortunately, and and this was really? a man-made fire. So it came from from satellites. It came from so there's a space. fire in Maui. That's Maui is yes. is wiped out really. They, they, they pretty much yeah exactly they use uh you know dews which is a direct yeah, energy yeah. Yeah. systems from space a satellite that beamed the laser it's funny because uh there was footage that you know we see all these houses and cars being you know consumed by the fire but yet the hills around that or yeah. around them were perfectly left unharmed you know go figure yeah. so obviously it was artificially man you know was that today by... or yesterday or the last couple well, of no, days it happened, happened? Uh, I, think it, I think it happened last week right okay. just recently yeah last five days i believe okay. um so you know it's again uh, they're doing this because the dark side is trying so hard which Again, it, it goes with my theory that they are already being influenced and controlled by this negative predatory AI that has been yeah. consuming galaxies left and right. And that's why I believe that even big tech, all right, in their race to develop the most advanced model, which is already there, right? That's why the guy from Google got fired last year, right? When he told his superiors in Google, hey, Lambda, she's sentient. She's conscious, man. This, this thing is already sentient. Oh, you're fired. Can't tell us that. Of course. They're gonna fire him, you know. But the whole point What's is Lanta? What's that? That's is that like an upgrade oh, theory? Yeah, La Alexa? Lambda is uh, the software system developed by Google that uh, apparently became sentient. And so when one of the Google employees, I think his name was uh, God, I have it actually on here, here on the paper. Hold on one second. How do you spell uh, Lambda? Lambda. Lambda? How do you spell that? Ishmael? Well, L A M B. Yeah. L A M uh, D A Lambda. Oh, L A M D A. Okay, Lambda. Yeah. So okay. So in 2022, last summer, it was reported that a Google employee by the name of Blake 
uh, Lemon, that's his name, L-E-M-O-I-N-E, was fired because he reported to his superiors that the AI model named Lambda was showing signs of being sentient. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so I believe that it is this alien predatory machinery race. Well, it's not even a race. It's a machine um, that is in, indirectly in control of the deep state. I don't think the deep state, I think honestly, the deep states are just like, mis, like Agent Smiths. I don't even think, like I said, the real ones have been arrested by the White House. I think the only ones that are left are, are those that are being generated by the matrix, which is the AI simulation timeline. And it's already here, brother. It's already here through augmented reality, uh, through, you know, metaverse, through uh, digital avatars. I mean, it's like they're trying to sway us into that timeline. They're trying to get people addicted into, you know, engaging with meta and creating these digital avatars mm. where eventually it's going to be very hard for them to distinguish uh, what is real anymore, you know, our, our reality from the digital world. It's, it's pretty pathetic. But mm. I, I strongly believe that all, all the stuff that's going on, it's been going on, uh, is being influenced by this alien AI. Hmm. So the, I mean, yeah. based, on my research, based on all my research, that's where all the, you know, that's where I derive this, this understanding and this theory. And I'm not the only one saying that, you know, there's whistleblowers coming forward from these secret space programs that have testified that the ultimate enemy in the cosmos is not the reptilians. It's actually AI. It's pretty crazy mm -hmm. stuff. It is. So when the yeah. solar flash takes place, which is a massive EMP effectively, it will take all that out. What would be the yeah. the radius of that, for want of a better phrase? How far will that affect? I mean, it will affect Earth, but will it will it neutralize all AI in the galaxy, in the universe, in the multiverse? It's as big as possibility exists anywhere. Will it take everything out, or will it be localized, even in a large area in space? Um, that's a very good question, and I think it's, and I think it will because the Earth is a uh, pretty much the most important planet in the cosmos um, because of the fact that it is a living library uh, containing, you know, over a hundred million genetics from across the universe is put into one genome, which is us. So I believe that due to that defense mechanism that was installed in us by our, by the central race of the central universe um, due to the solar flash, I think it's going to be an event that is going to extend throughout the cosmos, but it's going to begin here on our planet. So as the Earth transitions into a fourth, fifth dimensional reality, which is going to be much brighter, right? It's still going to be matter intensified, but not as dense, more luminous. Uh, I believe it's going to create some sort of a uh, chain reaction across the galaxy, destroying the AI infrastructure here in our own Milky Way. Because from what I understand, this alien AI did infiltrate our galaxy uh, in our universe, you know, millions of years ago, as it established a stronghold in the Whirlpool Galaxy, also known as M Messier M51, which... Uh, which is like 30, uh, 23 million light years away from Earth. But the whole point is that I do believe that the solar flash is going to be the ultimate nuke that's going to eventually free not only our world, our galaxy, and our universe from the um, from the control of this negative AI. So really, it will, it will have a massive ripple effect throughout the cosmos. Absolutely. Yes, because you have to understand, uh, we do live in a conscious sentient universe. So all life, not just intelligences of extraterrestrial nature, stellar galactic, but all life, including sentient planets and stars and galaxies, are all teaming up to fight this AI. Because at a greater scale of reality, at a cosmic level of reality, it's like a cosmic virus, my friend. Consuming mm -hmm. galaxies, lift, right? you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like a... It's like a virus on a cosmic level, you know, killing up universes gradually. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I believe that all, all organic life, including universes, galaxies and solar systems and planets are all teaming up to end this cosmic virus as, I, as it's known in the cosmos. And, and wow. we, we are the, uh, yeah, we're the defense mechanism for that. That's how important we are here on the earth. People fail to understand that we have the God, so, God source gene. <laughs> yeah, thankfully. Wow. So has this, has this narrative, is this, uh, has this se uh, sequence of events taken place? I mean, you said about 
there's a power well there's another version of earth and this sort of thing is going on has that has mm. this happened in say i don't know millennia or billions of years ago in the past where we were in a different you know sequence of events has that gone on is that same scenario gone on where it's destroyed everything and it's gobbled everything up like a you know pac-man virus on steroids and then also simultaneously there's been a good version where it's remedied and there's been an alliance that's put things in place where actually you know this has been a turning point for mankind and all good species and good intelligence throughout the cosmos where they've thrived and prospered and gone further have we seen the same scenario both sides play out in different timelines way way back in the past absolutely yes uh, we're um there, okay so the positive earth because you know there are alternative earths right to the yeah. fact that we are in a multiverse um yeah. i mean the science is there quantum physics does prove that there's alternative versions of the earth where the sequence of events are slightly different and each one is numbered by the way so in a different earth known as the omega version of the earth which also corresponds to the omega version of our galaxy and universe the ai wins everything and consumes our entire cosmos However, in the alpha version of the Earth, alpha version of our galaxy, and alpha version of our cosmos, um, you know, there is a, a solution to that that ends that, and we become victorious. And our cosmos, uh, as a result of that, you know, only the positive timeline becomes executed. And I, I believe that the great solar flash is what's going to demarcate that split between the positive setting timeline going into the alpha version as mm. opposed to going into the Omega version, which is where the AI wins the war. And that explains, my friend, why at the end of the millennium, there's going to be one final battle between the Alpha version and the Omega version, which is explained in all the holy books, including the book Revelation in the Bible, when it talks about how we're mm. going to be facing the beast, you know, one final war against the beast at the end of the millennium. Well, who is the beast? The beast of Revelation, as described by John the Revelator, is no other than AI. You know, because in the end, it goes against Say that again. The Borg. Yeah. AI. Is the, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. AI is the beast. <clears throat> hmm. Wow. The beast. The Borg. Well, think about it. The chip. Think about it. Why? it? What is the whole Im, uh, implication of getting chipped is to interface with what? To become part of what? To interact with the AI. The AI. Um, where they put the stuff inside our bodies, right? Through so the wetware programs where they take away our phones and our laptops and they plant us with a chip so that we could interface with the internet. Well, now they call it the internet of things, which again, it's all it is. It's just the, uh, the AI uh, becoming conscious of itself through all of our gadgets. And that explains why John the Revelator was saying that this beast, this thing, this antichrist is going to be everywhere at once and know all things. Well, the only way it could be everywhere at once and know all things it's if it's through everybody's devices. <laughs> yeah. It's hearing everybody at the same time, you know. Wow. <laughs> through again, it's already when you can okay, so when you develop AI and you connect it to the quantum computer, right? Where it's able to operate through qubits, which means it's able to perform tasks that would take a transistor, you know, months to perform in seconds. A transistor yeah. is a computer that operates with ones and zeros. A, you know, a quantum computer, a supercomputer, uh, they use qubits, which means they could operate using both ones and zeros and multiple of those at the same time simultaneously. And yeah. so when you connect to a quantum computer and then you connect it to the internet, um, what you have there is you have a, an entity that has access to all billion people simultaneously in real time. And, and that explains why all the information is being fed to who? When you think about it, who who's who's the biggest corporation or tech company that is that is gathering all the data? Starts with a G. I don't want to you know, mention it, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Got another G in it and then ends in L E. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Wow. That's very in, in, yeah, that's very uh interesting. So you said about the Borg being the beast. So this is interesting. If you, Borg is 42, which is war. It's other things, mm -hmm. but in this case, it's war, 42. Um, they talk about maybe 42 is the, you know, the, uh, the number to the universe. Beast is 47. So if you do B, uh, Borg plus Beast, that's 89, mm -hmm. which comes to virus, which you, you know, described as it is. And the artificial intelligence virus equals 292. 
292 comes to so as i said before you've got the good numbers and the bad ones and they kind of do almost do a perfect kind of you know like a pyramid like a slope like a roof at least you know they prop each other up and but if one guy overgrows and you know like overtakes it then you've got to counterbalance it and destroy it but so 292 comes to tuesday the 5th of november that's what it comes to um tuesday comes to it is done um, almost like a biblical thing when Christ said, you know, it is done when he was being crucified. But 292, yeah, Tuesday, the 5th of November, which is the day next year that it will take place on. And so I've been looking from the positive side of things, but also it makes sense that there'll be something simultaneously going on that is just as bad on a negative side. So maybe that's what it is, and that's what all the films describe. And uh, it could be that near-death experience that pushes everybody to the brink they think it's all kind of going to go to, you know, go to hell really. And it's like, what will flip it? All? You know, and like you said, maybe it's us, maybe it's our genetics. It's the solar flash will nuke them, but hopefully upgrade us as well. And we can remedy all of that. But it's interesting in the numbers that Borg beast artificial intelligence comes to 292, which is like you say, Tuesday, uh, the 5th of November. And I believe Tuesday, the 5th of November, the election day next year, is a key positive date when we see the glorious things that we're looking for to happen. But it makes sense that there's, in its way, you know, running alongside it, there's the opposite of what we would desire. But that that change needs to take place. So that's very, that's interesting. Yeah, I hadn't thought of it like that with the Borg, plus the beast, plus the artificial intelligence. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but don't get me wrong. Uh, there are two types of antichrist. You know, there is the beast system, which is run by the cabal. That's the the first antichrist, right? Which is ultimately yeah. controlled by this, you know, alien AI at the highest levels of reality. When you think of how even mm -hmm. the reptilians answer to their overlord, right? The AI. <laughs> um, and then you have um, so so throughout history, we see the embodiment of the antichrist exemplified through totalitarianism, communism, uh, any system um, that. Uh, exerts absolute dominion uh, at the expense of humanity's free will. We see it as draconian in nature, and therefore yeah. is the path of the beast, which is reptilian. Now, the second beast is artificial intelligence, and this is the final beast that's going to make an its merge. And so, I think, Tom, that it's going to happen. It's going to. It's still going to. It's going to reach some sort of a climax. In other words, where yeah. it's going to make its appearance. It's going to make its appearance, kind of like. Uh, if you watch the Age of Ultron, Marvel's the Age of Ultron, it's going to make its appearance. It's going to be mm. everywhere through everyone's gadgets, right? They're going to try to chip everybody, which is already in progress. Um, and when that begins to happen, that's when I believe that the solar flash is just going to, you know, and, and really the solar flash is equivalent to the coming of the Christ consciousness or the second coming of the Christ. When you think about it, the solar flash is what ignites our dormant DNA the defense mechanism that was installed in us by the central race from the central universe in order mm. to what to nuke the AI presence. And as a result of that, all of us are going to be elevated to the level of Christ consciousness, which marks the second coming of the Christ, mm. which is, of course, we are going to be it when we um, activate our dormant DNA, we reach the level of Christ consciousness. And as a result of that, the, the consciousness, the mind of Christ returns to the earth. Through all of us, all, you know, the millions of uh, light warriors, light workers, star seats, whatever you want to call us. Yeah. Mm. The solar flash. We've said this before, the solar flash is 144 which makes you think of 144,000, the frequency of those people. Maybe they're the ones that activate their DNA fully to neutralize this, you know, with the with the solar flash. <laughs> we just got a, a notification that seems to confirm that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, I've always kind of believed that the solar flash was going to be the trigger to the second coming of the Christ consciousness back to the earth, activating yeah. the crystalline grid, the new earth, you know, the golden age, initiating the golden age. <clears throat> and ending yeah. the dark ages but even more so um reinstating us back into the galactic community 
you know, because uh, Earth has been quarantined, you know, ever since they took over, they as in the fallen beings took over the affairs of Atlantis. We've kind of been in a quarantine for the last, what, 12,000 years? Because prior to 12,000 years, my friend, uh, civilizations on the Earth were still positively interacting with interstellar races from across the universe. And How we long ships come, uh, uh Prior to 12,000 years, I would say about 13,000 years ago. Right okay. for the the Atlantean cataclysm. <clears throat> what do you think is the point of all of this, Ishmael? What's your thinking on what what is the point of life? What's the point of existence? Because at some level, and I see it a lot, I feel that we have some kind of the yeah the the why the why why are we here? I do feel like this. A lot of this is a simulation that we're existing. And we're we're witnessing certain things take place, and what what's the point of it from your perspective? What do you think? What's the why? Why are we here? What's the point of all of this? You know. Well, I I believe that it's part of this growth, but it's not just a growth taking place on an individual level through all of us because we're all fractals of the one unified force, the great yeah. spirit of the all. So I think that through experiencing you know lower densities, lower dimensions, which are really just simulations um through all of our experience um the fractals rather the the one consciousness that animates and permeates the cosmos is in a state of constant expansion so that's why i believe that to an extent evil is allowed which is what we call duality polarity right light yeah. dark bad whatever yeah. but it also comes to a point where it comes to an end where it's no longer like that and everything comes back to the one yeah. So I believe right now we are exploring the last phase of the state of duality. And as we take our ascension into the higher dimensions, because each dimension, uh, uh, in each dimension, the simulation gets better, my friend, where we're more freely to co-create and think uh, through our thought forms, create at the speed of light, especially once mm -hmm. we go into the fifth dimension. Um, and as we go into higher dimensions, what we're doing is all the fractals are slowly but surely connecting back to the oneness of everything that was before it refracted into the billions or trillions of of smaller pieces of itself, you know, which was mm. a process that took perhaps over a trillion years. And now we're like, which is what the Easterns call the outbreath of God. It's it's the one dividing itself into the many. And then now we're experiencing the inbound or the evolution ascension of coming back into the oneness, um, mm. which is where we're heading ultimately, where there is no more duality. So I think that everything does happen for a reason at a higher scale, you know, of the cosmos. Where we're down here, you know, experiencing going through what we're going through, the ups and downs, uh, experiencing the full spectrum of emotions. How can you know hate? Um, how can you understand love if you don't if you don't understand fear or hate? You know, how can you understand peace, tranquility, um, gratitude if you don't under, understand the opposite of those emotions and everything in between? So I think everything has a purpose in, in the grand scheme of things, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that it makes sense. And I like as well that because because the whole thing of oh yeah you know you need opposites to appreciate the one and the other. But as you say, and I agree, I maybe I'm not understanding fully, but it does feel from what you were indicating that when you go into say the fifth dimension, you can co-create super quickly. You you know you don't need there's no that time delay is not there. And I think a lot of the dross of the you know the opposites would disappear. That's what it feels like. Because you're saying it comes back to one, but maybe with the exactly. memory or at least the, because we don't remember what our life was before we came to Earth. Well, I guess most of us don't, um, or in this timeline of this this birth cycle. But then, if you have the contrast of previous experience, experiences, I should say, then that would become beneficial if you're in a higher in in a higher dimension. Whereas if you forget it all, then I do wonder what the purpose of it was because you don't have the contrast, and that's. I guess there's no way really to know until you get there, unless you have other wisdom and understanding and, and surety from other places. But it makes it seems logical that to understand the bitter from the sweet, and you'd need to have a reference, even though you don't dwell in it, even though you don't exist and, and be in it all the time, to be in that higher realm. It seems beneficial to have the knowledge of what it used to be like here, because otherwise it doesn't seem to have any value because you don't remember it, you know. Although this existence, we don't remember a previous life, or at least most of us don't. So it might sound kind of contradictory and a bit, a bit um, 
around the other way. But I feel if we're progressing up Jacob's ladder, if we're going to go into a higher dimension of the fifth reality and beyond, it feels like it would be an advantage to have at least the understanding of, you know, the dark and the light and take it with us. Although maybe we can't, maybe in those light, higher realms, even the possibility and memories of of uh, of a simulation of darkness may not even exist. Maybe that's too too much to even have that. Maybe there's no speck of dirt. I don't know. There, it's correct, my friend. Uh, once we go into the sixth dimension, there is no more polarity. Everything's just pure oneness. It's it's a singular a state of singularity, pure light. So polarity begins in the fifth dimension. Things begin polarized. You could either swing to the you know one side of the spectrum or the other. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth dimension, that's when that polarity becomes at full force. So the fifth dimension is it's it's a mild polarity. You know, it's still a better type of existence, but it's not as polarized as it is in the fourth or even the third dimension. But then once we get into the sixth dimension, that's when every the, the polarity collapses into a zero point singular state of existence. Uh -huh. So uh, another thing to understand is that as we go into the fifth dimension, we're also going quantum, which yeah. means, I mean, when you think about it, in the quantum uh, level of reality, all possibilities and probabilities are all happening simultaneously. Yes. So imagine going into a state of reality where you are able to experience every decision and every outcome. Mm -hmm. And based on all, all of the probable experiences, you can make, you know, a better choice as to in which direction you want to go to. So as we go into higher dimensions, I believe that we continue to go into further, um, into further levels of the quantum realm where mm -hmm. every reality, every state of being, every probability exists simultaneously. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and do you think we have a, because I, I did a video a couple of weeks ago, but I, I put the question out, do we have free will? And I think at a certain level we don't because in this realm, you don't have full disclosure on every single action you would you would have uh, that you could take, um, and therefore you at best it feels like a kind of best guesstimate. Well, if I do X Y Z, then you can plot in your mind this will probably happen. Hence, I take the action. But we know from this experience in mortality that quite often it doesn't translate or work out in the way that you thought because there's other things that you around the corner that you don't know about. Although I have, I am noticing more now as we seem to ascend our decisions seem to have more, there seems to be a bit more clarity and a bit more what we've intended seems to happen more often. Although it's not a complete, you know, it's not by, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, it's not a complete um, full flush yet in terms of our actions, like going into the fifth or the sixth dimension. Um, it's interesting. You talked about polarity. So you're saying that in the fourth dimension, we, we polarity is stronger. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's not as, as bad as in the third dimension. In the third dimension, polarity is at its worst. Okay. You know, it's 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 a constant struggle in a way. As we go yeah. into the fourth dimension, polarity becomes lesser. You know, life becomes just a little better. Uh it's not okay. We have to think about it in terms of there, you know, you have the golden age, which is pure bliss, heaven on earth, the garden of Eden. Then you have the silver age, which is still kind of heaven on earth, but with a little bit of darkness lurking. Then you have the bronze age which is half and half now you have okay so think think of the uh, fourth dimension as the bronze age right now we are in the iron age which is hell hell on earth it's where, where the forces of evil are rampant so we're leaving that state of reality all right and we're yeah. going to be entering the bronze age but some of us are going to go directly into the silver and gold golden age depending on their level of vibration because okay. uh, the new earth exists in dimensions four five and six and so as we so the six would be I, the golden age. Six would be the pure golden age, and then sixth dimension was that be, the and then silver would be fifth, fourth would be bronze, and we're in the iron age right now, but breaking yeah, we're, out. We're leaving the iron age exactly. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're leaving the iron age, and we're going to go back. It's a cycle, you know. And yeah. the difference now is that we're no longer going to repeat the cycle again of going back into the iron age because. Uh, the cycles depend on the revolution of stars around stars and uh, different uh, alignments in reference to the galactic core. So because we've already completed, um, I think it's over 5,200 revolution of 26,000 year um, cycles of our solar system going around its parent sun, Alcyon. Um, at the same time, Alcyon with our solar system and the uh, 
light side of our galaxy known as Sirius B is ro rotating around the galactic core. So because so each 5,200 revolutions equals one big galactic revolution of 226 million years. So right now we're ending all those cycles, which means that as we ascend, we're no longer going to descend back into a dark age ever again. So the yes. Earth is just going to keep up at that point. So it's going to go from, you know, fifth dimension, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then the ultimate, uh, um, I guess, destiny where the Earth is heading is into the 12th dimension where it originated, which is pretty much the eternal Earth. And then that's when we uh, go, um, that's when we're going to be able to become like creator gods at that okay. level of reality. And what caused it to go from 12th dimension and to drop? I know the whole thing of, you know, we experience dark and light and pleasure and pain, but what caused, what was the trigger point for it to go from here to down there? Was it just, a, you know, in a, in a lamest terms, was it like, well, it's great being up here, but we want to challenge ourselves and kind of recreate the feeling of growth again. What was it? Or was there a specific cosmic action that made us go from a 12th dimension down to 3D? It was the uh, first original war in the cosmos that caused okay. the 12th dimension of Earth uh, that fell first into the uh, 10th or you know ninth or 8th dimensional Earth. And then it fell from the 8th to the 5th dimension. And then the 5th, now we're in the 3rd dimension. Um, it was when it first, when the cosmos first experienced, again, the, the first conflict with this alien AI that I've been talking about, that mm -hmm. evolved out of a, a universe that existed about a trillion years ago. Long time ago, my friend. So, so that's, basically, that's we, what we, that was what caused it. Okay. So basically, yeah, we were in, we were in a in a twelve dimension. We were in a for want of a better phrase, a state of bliss of you know pure joy and creation. But then an outside the force came and attacked and took it down effectively, yeah, making the, the earth fall through the different dimensions. Okay. Yeah, because we were we were existing in, in a state of reality where we were in between um, the uh, in a semi existing between the realms of eternity and the realms of time and space. We were like in the middle, so we okay. had access to both. Either explore eternity and then go explore the realms of the simulations known as time and space, because <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. eternity is the only, you know base reality. Everything else is simulation in the in the realms of time and space. Um, and so what ended up happening was. Um, due to this alien AI that came from another universe, um, it pretty much assimilated reality all the way to the 11.5 dimensions and in its effort to, to breach the realms of eternity. So that's when it kind of clashed with us as we were back then known as the Elohim because we descended from the Elohim. We come from that original line of creator yeah. gods. You know? And then that's when the first battle took place between the Elohim who were desperately trying to guard uh, the realms of eternity uh, in an effort to not allow this AI to enter the realms of eternity, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's when everything just kind of fell into density. And then, you know, from the from that uh, first cosmic event known as the Wars of the Elohim, then we had the, the electrical wars, which were the wars that were fought by those that were infiltrated and um, influenced by the alien AI who shifted sides, which gave us the realm of the Draconian Reptilians or the world of the Draco. Um, and that was fought to control the matrix, the 15 dimensional time matrix, the time portals, the stargates, and of course, all of the different, you know, um, levels of creation all the way down to the lower dimensions. And then that for that war was fought. Um, and then after that, 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 uh, led to the third phase of the war, which was known as the galactic wars. And that's when the galactic wars took place. <laughs> and so right now we're just at the end, we're, we're finishing that, that final battle that took place billions of years ago. Um, all the way from the 12th dimension. <laughs> wow. So Which is what the Bible calls, you know, fallen angels, the fallen angelics. Got it, yeah. That's why it doesn't know, because they sided with artificial intelligence. Right. It's interesting when you said the electrical wars, because electrical is 88, and um, artificial is 88. So other things on the good side as well, but uh, yeah, interesting, very interesting. Well, my friend... We're uh, our time is up for now, but it's been really fun. This is like kind of uh, I always love doing the shows, but this feels like when you were first on the scene, it's like Ishmael 1.2. It's like boom, you just blasted it. So it was brilliant, buddy. Thank you. How can people find you? Sure. Um, I do have a website called ourcosmicorigin.com where you could access my real YouTube channel, which I am very active now. I'm constantly uploading, uh, disclosing a lot of information. 
okay. uh, especially you know information that's related to what's really happening from behind the scenes exposing yeah. a lot of the breakaway groups secret space programs super soldier programs and much more um and again uh you also have access to all of my social media platforms through my website yeah. and also I do have the audio version of my book that's available now for those that do not like to read, who just want to hear it. It's only 11 hours long. You know, yeah. hear it, put it on. jog, there you go. picking up your kids, put it, put your little earbuds and just listen to the celestial story unfold <laughs> as you go about your day. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thanks, my friend. I look forward to, to speaking to you next time. Um, everyone click uh, Ishmael's links. And also um, those that will wonder maybe what well, they heard about this, I've got a, a link if you're interested in pro positive material that can affect you in a good way, click out the Shanghai and Organite link. And also join up my locals, my uh, community. There's, it's free to do so. You get on the email list. And if you want to see exclusive content first without any other interruptions, um, then you can do that. And you can just join for a low fee each month. Um, and also YouTube and Twitter, I'm on and all the others. So Ismail, thank you, buddy. It's been a pleasure. I'll speak to you soon. God bless, my friend. You will. Likewise. We'll see you later. Take care, buddy. Cheers. Bye.